What's up, everybody? Monday, October 30th, tomorrow, Halloween. So, <laughs> today I got some uh, videos from friends in New York. It was all rainy and cold. I'm out here in beautiful Southern California, 80 degrees, blue sky. Anyway, so last week I said, uh, I think it was last Thursday, I said that was the bottom in the sell-off and I cited the improvement in the fiscal flows that we actually, for the month of October, last Thursday, uh, the government's balance flipped back from a surplus to a deficit. That's what we wanted to see. Remember, what is a deficit? A deficit equates to an addition to the financial balances of the economy. What is a surplus? A surplus is a draining of the financial balances from the economy. So you want to see that thing in a deficit. It was a small little deficit, but nevertheless, uh, we actually, the worst was, what, around um, October 17th, when right after those uh, big uh, ta that big tax drain, and then we started coming back, coming back. And last week I said, now that the government's balance flipped back into a deficit, I said that the, you know the, everybody was hysterical and they pushed the market down below what I called its its fair value. All right, for lack of a of a better term, and we saw that on the upside too. I. I I told you that, or I reminded you that back in July when the market was going up and everybody was like cheering, I said, it's getting speculative because I saw the slowdown in the flows and I knew that the tax drain was, was coming. And I said to my subscribers, raise cash. This was an email I sent out on the 24th of July. And then last week I said, you know, this happens. They they push it. It always goes beyond where you think it's going to go. That's why I don't try to, you know, precisely. It's impossible to precisely pick that point, you know, that precise top or that precise bottom. You want to get in either, you know, on the buy side or either or on the sell side. When conditions say... It's time to get in. Like you cannot predict. And, and this whole exercise in trying to find some exact point, I said it before, that just, that just inhibits your ability to take action. You're like, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready. It's got to be just right. It's, it's never going to be just right. Believe me. Listen to what I'm saying. Just when, when conditions turn around and, and it, they're telling you now is the time, Now's the time. So anyway, we got to we got to pop back up today. I, I think we're good now until mid November when uh, the flows will peak out again with that quarterly interest payment. But let me just say something because Wednesday is the Fed meeting and there's not going to be a rate hike. I can tell you that right now because we know the Powell Fed what do they do? They just they just follow whatever the market says. But you can absolutely expect Jerome Powell in that press conference, which happens like a half an hour after the Fed releases its statement. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna continue with that hawkish tone because you know he wants to try to discipline uh, price expectations, inflation expectations. So the zombies are going to sell off of that at, at, the, um, at the press conference. I'm almost 100% certain. But when that happens, you want to buy into that, all right? Because now really the only thing that's important and the only thing that's ever important, I shouldn't say ever, but the only thing that's important are the, these flows, like what's happening with these flows that drives everything. And I always give you like a, a you know a, a two tier analysis. I give you these short term cycles, you know, where we have four quarterly tax, well, five tax strains, and then four quarterly uh, interest uh, payments, 
And then I also give you the macro picture where I'm saying, look, government spending seven trillion plus annually, running two trillion deficits. Like you can basically just buy the market and go away, you know, go away somewhere for the next couple of years, as long as uh, that fiscal picture remains intact. Now, let me just, you know, as a qualifier, I'll say November 17th, the current continuing resolution that keeps the government funded, that expires, man. And we got, you know, we're going to have to go through that bullshit again with, you know, between the House and the Senate and will they come up with something? They got this new guy in there. What's his name? Michael Johnson or something. Um, the speaker, he's a, he's a hardline fiscal conservative, you know, so I don't know, like I, I, I can't speculate on that. I'm assuming it's going to go down to the wire like it always does. And I'm assuming that there's not going to be a government shutdown because I don't think it's politically expedient for either side. So I'm going with that right now. If there is a shutdown, we adjust the strategy, okay? And it really also depends on how long the shutdown lasts, but let's take it one step at a time. So, I mean, I told, I told you back in really before July, I was saying this stuff all the way, as far back as I can remember, I said, you know, uh, October is going to be rocky. I, I said September we have a tax train, followed by October we have another tax train. So there's going to be a lot of volatility. I said expect to sell off. Then last week on Thursday I said that was the bottom. And actually NASDAQ did bottom then. We we're up on Friday. The Dow went down on, on Friday. But the Dow's up over 500 points today. So I mean, I, I don't know how you're going to get better information than this. And I'm not, again, I'm not... I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I'm not trying to brag or anything. I'm just saying like, what I do is a, is a very scientific, logical, rational approach. And I tell you guys all the time to control your emotion, stay disciplined, focus on what you need to focus on, which is these flows. And again, if you're a subscriber, like I'm sending out stuff all day long by email. I'm, saying, I'm sending out stuff all day long by email. I also said last week that the dollar was peaking out and it is coming down. And that, that is also tied to these flows. Now, one thing I want to talk about, and again, this is just going to expose, and I like to do this, not, you know, it doesn't make me feel good because it's frustrating, but I like to do this because it's part of how I uh, help you guys to become more educated and informed about what's going on and, and not pay attention to the media and mainstream economics, which, you know, they just have it wrong all the time. So I saw today an article in, uh, in I think it, it was Investor's Business Daily. I don't even know if they call it that anymore. Business Daily or something. I, I don't know what they call it, but it used to be, I think it used to be Investor's Business Daily. And big headline, it says, Treasury has to borrow $776 billion in the fourth quarter. It's the biggest borrowing ever for a fourth quarter of a fiscal year. All right? So, like, again, everything's put out. You got to understand, everything's put out there. Not really intentionally to scare you, although I think that's sometimes the motive because... Uh, fear is a, is a powerful motivator and it gets you to read the articles, but it's really coming from their ignorance. All right. We got to borrow 776 billion. First, let me explain that there currently we have about 3.2 trillion trillion in reserves in the banking system held by federal reserve banks. Okay. That doesn't even include like the 1.5 trillion in the Fed's reverse repo facility. I mean, if you add both of those things together, you know, you're close to 5 trillion in, in reserves, in cash. 
How did, uh, let, let's, let's set aside the reverse repo. Let's pretend it doesn't even exist anymore. We'll just deal with the 3.2 trillion that the banks hold right now. How did it get there, that 3.2 trillion? It got there from government spending. When government spends, it adds to reserve balances in the system. So now, when the treasury has to quote unquote borrow, it's not borrowing, all it's doing is it is exchanging treasury securities for reserves. I mean, the money is already there, okay? The money is already there. So there's no borrowing going on. And the level of financial assets in the system remain exactly the same. The only thing is the, the, the composition has changed a little bit. You have less reserves, and more government securities. And what's wrong with that? Because government securities earn interest, okay? So you're actually getting a little bit more now because the interest paid on those government securities is gonna be, is gonna be higher than the interest paid on reserves. But they make a big deal out of it, and believe me, this is, there go my friends, there go my friends again barking. Fucking unbelievable. Every time I do this, Quiet! Every time I do this. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I need a studio. Um, so just be prepared that there's going to be this hysteria in the fourth quarter about this borrowing. I mean, we, we, saw, it again, we saw it earlier this year when none other than Ray Dalio was, he was going nuts over this and saying how it was gonna crash the whole freaking economy when they raised the, the, uh, the debt ceiling and he's like, that's it, we're done, we're finished, government's gonna have to borrow, you know, whatever, and we're fi nothing happened. In fact, we're growing at 5%, GDP growth uh, uh, accelerated. Ray Dalio. And he'll probably be out there again talking about the same stupid thing. I mean, this is what comes from, event, you know, maybe eventually, and I, I, I'm fearful about this, I have to be honest. Because I've always said that a bad belief system is like a disease in the body. If you don't eradicate the disease, eventually it kills the body. And, you know, this is rife through Congress. These members, they all think, you know, we're borrowing from China and we're gonna run out of money. And this is even at, at, at the FOMC, it's even Janet Yellen. They all believe this, they all believe this. I saw one uh, congressman talking about how social security is gonna run out of money. Social security doesn't even have any money. Like all the money that gets taken from our paychecks and stuff like that, that FICA stuff, Guess where that goes? That, that just goes into the treasury general account where all spending comes from. It's not like tucked away somewhere. And remember Al Gore used to say, we're gonna put it in a lockbox. There's no lockbox, there's no warehouse. It just goes into the treasury general account and it's, it's spent. And the, the social security gets the government, uh, IO, basically IOUs, their non-negotiable securities. That's an intra-governmental exchange the the treasury gives them here well you know here and then they just make the payments it, it never runs out it's like what alan greenspan said i'll repeat this again for the umpteenth time i've been saying is you could google it google alan greenspan um paul ryan social security google alan greenspan Paul Ryan, Social Security. And I think this is back in 2005 or 2006 when Paul Ryan, he was a, just a regular congressman and Greenspan was testifying and Paul Ryan said, asked Greenspan, well, wouldn't it be better if we privatized Social Security? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it make that more, wouldn't it make the system more secure? And Greenspan said, you know, there's nothing to prevent the federal government from creating as much money as it wants and 
paying it to whomever it wants. The question is, how do we create a system to ensure that the real assets are there for that money to purchase? In other words, what he was saying is, it's not about the money. The government could create any amount of money that it wants, but are you gonna have the stuff? In other words, for seniors, are you gonna have you know, food and shelter and clothing and uh, health care and maybe leisure and all the things that are going to be required by people, you know, in their senior years to live. That, that Those are the real assets that in those things you could run out of. OK. Everybody knows it doesn't matter how much money you have. If you run out of those things, you're out. OK, so. And you could see in that, if you Google that and you watch that, it's a, little, a video on YouTube. If you watch that clip, you'll see that Greenspan's explanation just went right over the head of Paul Ryan, right? Right over his head. Oh, there they go, right on cue. That's probably my cue to get out of here because I can't stand when these yappy dogs start. Yeah, I love dogs. I've said this before. I've had dogs. And I love dogs. I just can't stand these little yappy dogs. I, I cannot stand them, okay? Barking all the time, nervous, like some people, like their owners, a lot of times like their owners, right? You know what I'm talking about. All right, everybody, that's it for today. See you tomorrow, bye.